empowering your life. Welcome to The Sphere. This episode is sponsored by Houston Housewives of Finance. For more information on increasing your cash flow, becoming your own money manager, and to schedule your complimentary personal finance strategy, contact the Houston Housewives of Finance today at 1-844-700-4463. Elite Dental Wellness. At Elite Dental Wellness, Dr. Ashandra Batiste understands that one of the biggest obstacles is dental fear. The vision at Elite Dental Wellness is to ensure every patient is treated with respect, ultimate care, patience, and love. Call us today to make an appointment at area code 713-789-8680. Looking to advertise? Join the Sphere's vast demographic reach of thousands of people all over the world. Send an email today to advertise at thesphere.tv or call us at area code 832 772-7789. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for another edition of Society Now, a show that endeavors to bring you riveting content. <laughs> we, 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 you know, we are really endeavoring now to do right. a lot of things. A lot of things. A lot baby. of things. We give you riveting content that excites and in, in, invokes and inspires some real conversation, real dialogue with real persons. This is not fake news, and no. we do not offer up alternative facts. We give you the real on this show. My name is Kira Laws, and you can follow me on Instagram at the Modern Day Cindy, and I have my handsome co-host with me. Hey, y'all, what's going on? It's your man, Kaylin Laws, aka Senior Wapo. Do me. A favor, go over to Instagram, go over to Twitter, go over to Facebook for those of you who like the book, and follow me at Senor Wapo seven one three. And we have an amazing. First of all, shout out to my wonderful co-host, the beautiful, the 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 immaculate, the um, industrious, the industrious. Uh, uh-huh, right the now, you know like the in, the indomitable <laughs> modern day Cindy. Make sure you go to her Instagram account and. Flood her with likes, love, and everything um, wonderful. But today, <laughs> baby, we have a wonderful. G- Listen, First of when, all, when you're in the pre- presence of greatness, sometimes you have to make sure that you put on your good clothes, right? You know, you I usually make sure. wear one string of pearls, but today I wore like twelve. You know, you know, you it's know, important. The Bible declares to give honor to whom honor is due, and I want to honor it's, this you know, this young brother, man. He is. Uh, a man of stature, uh, physically, <laughs> you know, he, he's a he's a pretty he's, mighty. He's a, he's a big brother, mighty dude. Um, but 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 also in his accomplishments, in his knowledge, in his know how, in his travels, in so much, and we want to welcome our friend, our brother Terrence Bolton. What's up, man? What's going on? How are you, Senor Guapo? I'm well, bro. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing well, Kaylin. Thank you guys so much for having me. On Absolutely, the show, man. You guys are doing marvelous things. I tune in every time. You know, I hit him up because I didn't even know you guys were doing this at first, and I saw the interview that you did with uh, Christina Sanders. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, Chris. Yeah, Christina's dope. <laughs> TSU stand up, baby. Yes, you know indeed. what I mean. So, shout out to you guys for keeping the great work going and you know inspiration for all of us. We're trying, not just you know the little people, everybody, whatever. The look, knock it off. <laughs> Meanwhile, people. we're trying to catch up. Right, you, your resume is so long. I mean, you've started doing your path has been so like interesting. You started your pursuit of greatness at I'm going to say a young age of maturation. Yeah. Please tell us about who you are and what you've done. In your life. My name is Terrence Bolton. I'm a Gemini. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> he likes long walks to the park. Long walks in the park. Connection way. 5 p.m. Sunset. That's it. That's <laughs> it. Sandwiches and bottles, and we're good. No, um, I come from a family that is rooted in Houston, Texas. Okay. Uh, a great deal of educators, doctors, entertainers, musicians, um, and I, I really had that that backing when I was a child to do more than just be average. Okay. Yeah. My mother and my father would not allow me to be average. Come on and now, mama and dad. being is, they're not average. Right. Okay. <laughs> right, right. 
So, you know, I, I love the fact that I carry a legacy everywhere that I go, mm-hmm. um, especially with, you know, of course, the alma mater. Shout out to it. And um, on, all of fighting the great tigers. things. Fighting Tigers. Just won the swag again. You know, but. TSU, TSU, <laughs> we love you. Always. But um, I stepped outside of the realm a little bit. I went to the military for served a great seven uh, seven. I'm sorry. A uh, to 2007. I was active from 99 to 2007. Okay. And wow. then from 2007 to 2014, I was a reservist in the United States Navy. Oh wow. And I actually saw combat twice. Okay. Um, in the Enduring Freedom and Iraqi Freedom Wars. And I'm telling you, it, that's why you. Oh, I'm yeah, about to say something. Never mind. It. Never that, mind. No, no, but that's no, the reason. <laughs> that, yeah. That. Oh, okay. I didn't know <laughs> that. Wow. Yeah. Yo. Okay. Yeah, I am a veteran. Okay. I yeah, I knew you were a vet, but I didn't know that you saw combat. Yeah. So this is interesting because we never really get a chance to talk to. I mean, most people in our community, you know, we we hear about veterans and we think of veterans have a certain face or a look right. to them. Yeah. We never think about the young veterans, those who have went maybe straight out of high school. They come back and you're talking about someone that served yeah. twice, you know, in war. Like, that's a lot. I mean, yeah, things man. that you see, then you experience. Absolutely. Like, how does it affect you now? Like that, you you know, you're engaging with people all the time, but how does it you when you think about what's going on in our government to be completely honest i have a comfortability in knowing that i did my part when i was uh active okay but it scares me because i'm not active now mm. i don't have my hands yeah. on the button now i get it i'm in that realm of you have done your part we got it from here but that scares me yeah because of the things that i'm seeing yeah both locally and nationally, I really, really want people to understand your vote does have meaning. Absolutely. And in that, I want people to understand, please don't think that, oh, well, I'm not going to get it anyway because we are not heard. People look at those votes, they throw them away. No, 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 no. Because there's a strong group of black women that will disagree with you that made a very impactful change. So, um, to completely answer that question, I always am on guard. Okay. Hey, let me. Wow, that's what's up. Let, let me let me go off script for just for a second, and I want to. I definitely want to ask this as a veteran, and, and you talking to your your your. You know, I don't know. Is it teammates, platoon members? Like how do you, I don't know how we call each other shipmates in shipmates. the navy. There we go. Thank you. Shipmates. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So it's talking to your former shipmates and other veterans that you know. What is the conversation regarding? Uh, you already know where I'm going. Yeah, what's, I what's do. Colin Kaepernick. <laughs> and what's I can the, say what's it. What's I mean, the conversation hey. regarding Colin Kaepernick and, and his pers- and the, the the narrative that he's disrespecting the you flag? You know what really infuriates us that civilians who've never served a day in their life take up this. Well, you should be ashamed of yourself. How are you? A person who has not put yourself in the the vein of of serving right. of service going to tell somebody who is in this country who are we we are supposed to be fighting for those rights right. absolutely um we do have amendments for a reason yeah, absolutely. we do have a constitution and a declaration of independence for a reason how dare you try to deny someone their inalienable rights why would you do that i and you know so interesting because i thought you know this but based on history, just based on looking at every all the images I've seen of soldiers and veterans and persons who are in every you know all branches of military, I always thought that taking a knee was a very respectful thing you to come do. Come on and say that. Um, I've <laughs> never seen anybody taking a knee, take a knee in a disrespectful way. Exactly. And so I thought that that was a very classy way of standing Absolutely. for or stand or or kneeling for an injustice Absolutely. without without rocking the boat. I think it's. Um, I think it's very it's a it's an immature approach to believe that everyone has to stand in agreement with yeah, everything. Absolutely. I think that, you know, like you mentioned, our the flag that we wave or, you know, or the the, the mm. national anthem that we speak of mm-hmm. or whatever you believe in, it was all meant for equality. Thank you. And there there has to be some form of resistance, right? Absolutely. There has to be people that at at certain turns of history and government when things change and we notice something that's not right or something to miss. Absolutely. Somebody has to take a, a stand or a kneel. Thank you. Or knee um, yeah. to say, hey, I'm noticing something not right. And it's always going to be that one or two it that is. actually started a martyr for the generations and times. And unfortunately, we, we're seeing a young, another young man do it. I'm glad that he has his life 
You oh, know, yes, I am um, too. <laughs> um, that, that wasn't an exchange for, I, I hate that he is going through um, yeah. some of the sacrifices in terms of his jobs, but I, I love that he's still giving. Yeah, but look, actively. At, look at your history. Look at the history upon which this country was founded. Mm -hmm. When Martin Luther King dared to do what he did, there were several people calling him, you know, well, he's just going against the grain. He may be, do be doing it peacefully. Oh, yeah, he was mm -hmm. called a terrorist. But he was, exactly. Oh, look at Malcolm FBI X. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Edgar Evers, same thing. Our women, Rosa Parks, mm -hmm. uh, Mary McLeod Bethune, um, Madam C.J. Walker. There are several different entities that we look at when we talk about those that took a stand against injustices. And to be completely honest, how can you live in a truly democratic society and not celebrate democracy Absolutely. or not practice democracy? And, and it's so interesting that this is where we are today. Right. Um, unfortunately, mm. I think that, you know, we've we saw eight years of progress, but not really. And I say that because we 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 were in a we were. Well, we, first of all, I believe we were blessed to be able to live through those eight years. Absolutely. And witness. Absolutely. In real time. Um, the struggle for power. Yeah. Um, yeah. That was, um, I guess, the struggle for power veiled in in. um political pursuits but really was it had a lot to do with who was in power that's true and the unifying of the country under that person because i've, I've you mm -hmm. know I've, i didn't really see a lot of um divisiveness during that yeah. time it yeah. wasn't until recently that i feel like we've seen so much divisiveness we've seen so much negativity we've yes. seen so many mixed messages and uh. and i've you know, sitting in this chair, having this responsibility to provide information, whether it's, you know, current events or pop, pop culture, I, f I feel very responsible for trying to give people as much information that I have mm. that I fully believe is, is truthful. Um, but I, I haven't been seeing that as much um, because the messages are always seems like they're always messy. Yeah. It's like a nasty gumbo. I mean, well, think <laughs> about it. When you have the, the commander in chief tweeting <laughs> like a little school girl yeah i mean oprah said it best you know there is no reason to retaliate to someone in that regard when you know that it's a deeper meaning behind what's going on absolutely i mean you don't have to look at it as you know we're going to go back and forth you know tit for tat you know you say something i'll say something mm -hmm. you say something i'll say something no we're not going to do that i believe that as the leader of the free world as we call it you should have a standpoint of leadership that people want to imitate mm -hmm. and emulate you want people to respond to your brand of leadership as this is the right way to do it so 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 but let, let me cut you off there just, just for, for conversation's sake that's happening <laughs> People are for who? No, no, no. People <laughs> no, are responding. A lot of people responding. People are responding the way when you look at his whole campaign. Yeah. what he set out to do is, I'll give is, you actually, that. is actually happening. I'll give you know you what that. I'm saying? I will it, give you it's that. It's just on the what we believe is on the wrong side of the pendulum. Of and course, that's so to speak, that's so to what speak. I really should have uh, spoke at mm -hmm. or, or addressed mm -hmm. because yes, there are individuals that are following that, but I mean as a collective. Yeah, we no, I know all I, should I, be I like. That's what I'm talking about right there. Yeah. So I look at it as we need to be in ooh, incredibly cautious to what we project as the right way. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then I think within all of that, um, you you know, you like I said, you have this this background. Like you said, you were reared in excellence by your parents. Absolutely. You you know, you deviated not from your excellence, but from the path. I'm sure probably the path that they would have probably wanted you to pursue initially actually no Did you? because my father my uncles they all served in the military okay well, i'm the only you... navy man though they're all oh. army men oh because you said you, you deviated <laughs> okay so the deviation yeah. was in the branch there you go okay so the branch okay so you deviated in branch <laughs> not in service let me right. be clear about right. that yes um but but you know when you came back and you you know you see you're a proud member of a hbcu absolutely um and you believe in the students you believe I in do. that his history that comes with being an hbcu member mm -hmm. you know i what do you see on campus that really you know makes you like i'm at the right place like what do you see within the, the student body that makes you feel like i'm you know i'm giving my service at the right time in the right place every time i see a student that mm -hmm. comes in our university who has never been outside of home, who has never experienced life, and they are basically smiling, 
jolly, happy, um, eager. Mm -hmm. That's what does it for me mm -hmm. because I'm noticing they are getting what they need. Mm -hmm. They're getting that service. They're getting that education. They are seeing new and very different things than what they're used to. And we provide that service. We as Texas Southern, we do that. What do you see from, I mean, just take yourself out of being a member of that particular university, but as a whole, just as being an African-American male, what do you see as a need that maybe the community needs to con you know, the community can contribute to help students build a bridge from, you know, being in the parents' house to adjusting to adulthood because there is there is an adjustment that needs Absolutely. to happen. Absolutely. Um, what I believe that the community should do is take a roundtable look mm -hmm. at what it means to step outside of your comfort zones. Being in college in the city that you grew up in that's right down the street from where you are, not saying that anything is wrong with that, but... I did differently. Mm -hmm. I went away. Mm -hmm. I went to go learn what life was outside of my community. Mm -hmm. But I took my community with me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yeah. I took those values and those morals mm -hmm. and all of that leadership that I had acquired at that young age. I took it where I went. Mm -hmm. And I started to learn and insert myself into society outside of the one that I was familiar. And I believe that we, as the African-American community, we need to start doing that more. Mm -hmm. We need to start paying more attention to what we can do to build ourselves build your brand make yourself very noticeable and then don't be so closed off to new experiences and new forms of education in different places you know you I said something that. man that's really really key uh terrence you said something that, that, that we we are supposed to build ourselves we need to pay attention to be on. able to build ourselves Absolutely. right and one way that i think it's really really critical for us to build ourselves is to build our financial picture individually you better say that as a family and so <laughs> as such this portion of the show is sponsored by Houston Housewives of Finance. Did you know that only four states in the United States offer financial education? 33% or more than 77 million Americans don't pay their bills on time. 39% of Americans carry credit card debt from month to month. And 39% of adults say they don't have enough savings. Don't become one of these statistics. Let Houston Housewives of Finance advise you on increasing your cash flow and becoming your own money manager by scheduling your complimentary personal financial strategy today contact houston housewives of finance again today oi at 1-844-700-4463 or email us at info at houston housewives of finance.com ask how you can participate in a complimentary financial literacy workshop near you houston housewives of finance are the new faces of the new age of financial services you gotta love kaylin because he's always okay. gonna bring some vocabulary animation with the vocabulary that's <laughs> that, amazing so today we learned that oi means today it does and that's in spanish and so that's that is, you know so we <laughs> learned <laughs> this today and it's important for you to take that with you because we live in a very diverse country very true and we you know with it's important for us to communicate more than the language that is our national language which is english because you know unfortunately here in america we don't have the diversity of languages right. that are you know that many countries do have very true. so we should actually as part of that community development with students we should also push language acquisition mm -hmm. and experiences and money management Agreed. I'm um, not necessarily pushing them out the house, but push them into stuff that's going to build them. Because I think a lot of times we push our kids out the house and they're not ready. Well, well, well you, you know, know and, they're and just maybe, not maybe ready. You speak to this, uh, you know, having lived overseas and traveled the world extensively mm -hmm. for, you know, the better part of 10, 11 years. Oftentimes, it's many cultures who are considered Eastern cultures or Middle Eastern cultures, they... They let their ki children stay home with them until they're ready. You know, right. we have this culture of when you're 18 years old, you got to go. Right, you got to go. Right, and it's and it's and it's it has worked. Right, and it definitely has not worked. You, mm -hmm. you understand what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. you're expecting an 18 year old kid to make a life decision. Come on, and they're barely <laughs> trying to figure out like like they're trying to figure out what they want, who they are, what is life, yeah. what does this world look Absolutely. like? You know, yeah. and so it takes it it takes. That kind of perspective, it does. you know what I'm saying. That's mm -hmm. why I think traveling, especially at such a great, age, at such a young age, being able to experience the world was was was. And a, I, and I, you know, an and advantage. I feel like I don't, yeah, and, uh, absolutely an advantage. And I also, I'm, a, a, you know, I'm a proponent of not just the traveling, but apprenticeships and you know things that help people learn and figure trades out what the the trades, trades, absolutely, absolutely. what yeah. they want to do before they even make it to college. You're like, okay, is this what is this the route for me? Because it's not necessarily for everybody. It's a great experience. It is, but it's a it's 
it's an experience that most people pay for. Yeah. Now, what if you can get that same experience just, you know, you know, absolutely, absolutely doing other right. things. And you know what's funny, you guys? I had not been inside of a uh, high school in quite some time. Mm -hmm. So when I came to TSU and I started working with uh, um, um, recruitment, I'm sorry, um, I started to go to the high schools and see how different they are now. Now they have the ability to do trades, mm -hmm. learn yeah. trades, you know, get some experience with that beforehand and take it and do whatever they want to do with it. It is just amazing to me yeah. to see the shift that took place because when I was in high school, I'm not going to get my age. No, I <laughs> no, no, I'm not going to do that. I love my don't age. Don't be ashamed. I'm not ashamed at all. Most people don't believe me, but I am 37 years old. Yeah. We like 37. So, yeah. Well, I'm always the youngest in the room Because you're go. the kid. No. <laughs> Golly, man. What yes, I will be 38 years old this year. And in seeing what I saw, I got to see, you know, people doing auto mechanic work, various forms of fashion design, mm -hmm. uh, culinary arts. And I am a culinarian myself. I got my education and training through the United States Navy. Thank you, guys. And oh, I wait, you said culinarian. I yes. never knew that that was that was the demonym. Yes. Yes. That's, I, mean, I never well, knew that. Was, what was that word? That culinarian. The dem We're the gonna demonym. Demonym. No, demonym. Oh, yeah. that, <laughs> he's, wait. Is this just something you do in new two. words every day? Number no. two. The <laughs> second word today, y'all. Is y'all pick up on it? It's Deminem. Deminem. Did I say it correctly? Yeah. Deminem. Okay. Yeah. You have to get a definition. NYM. Yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's the name that you call somebody. So a Texan, that's the Deminem for people that live in Texas. Right. Estonian is the Deminem. That's right. Deminem. Yeah. Deminem. Yeah. Oh, I feel smart. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we have a so conversation. Oh, my Y'all so petty. Y'all like so We need to have a Sesame Street okay. moment. Now, you know what's funny? That's where I got my start. Sesame Street. My mom and dad sitting me used, in front of that. I, I oh, used my to, God. I love <laughs> Sesame Street in his parents. Parents, you know, yes. you know, we that's the kind of programming that we want our, our, our children to subscribe to. Our daughter loves. Oh, my God. She loves it on YouTube. Yes. Um, uh, but we also want to talk to those who are who are potential subscriber, subscribers as hey, well. Subscribers. Hey, subscribers. Facebook Live audience. Hey, everybody. We want <laughs> Shout to, out. We want you to subscribe to our show on all the major platforms, including iTunes, SoundCloud, Google Play, Stitcher, uh, Spreaker, iHeartRadio. Heart. We're on YouTube. Yeah. Just go ahead and find us. But do us a favor as well. <laughs> Review our show in iTunes with constructive feedback. Be nice. Mm. Share this Facebook <laughs> Live post and the entire show with your family and friends. And donate to our mission to bring enriched and inspiring content each and every week. You can donate at www.thesphere.tv forward slash. That's the one that's leaning to the right. Donate. <laughs> All right. So artists, the artists. Garrett Walker, with, hey, 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 we appreciate hey, you. Hey, Angel, hey, Damien, what up, Angel, DJ? Jay, Jay Clinton. Hey, is that Clinton, baby? Hey, that is. Jones? That, is. that was my executive vice president when I was SGA president yeah, at TSU. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's been, he's he's been on his, at waves. studio as well. Brandon Murphy. Yes. Mr. Hey, ba Baron. Yeah, absolutely. Baron, I'm sorry, I can't read. Baron, Baron Murphy. Oh, I don't, I don't want to. Lewis, I don't want to mess, <laughs> yeah, mess your name up. And, and everyone else that haven't. Throw a comment. We yeah, yeah, we appreciate you. Yeah. We appreciate you guys so, so much for, for tuning, tuning in. in. Make sure you go and subscribe to so you can get the rest of this show and hear what this phenomenal brother has uh, has to say. We appreciate you guys and see you next time. Absolutely. Now let's kind of switch gears a little bit and let's, let's talk it. about some things that have, that have been kind of hurting and maybe even hurt the community. But yeah. we, we're now yeah. starting to see a little bit of progress, right? Yes. So I call 2016 was a really crazy year, not because we had an election, not because it was a lot of um, some, you know, the political environment was a little crazy. But ideally, the summer of 2016, we were seeing a lot of um, deaths. And yeah. as we saw, you know, we had Philando Castile. We had, yes. you know, everything that was happening on in Baltimore. It seemed like every other week there was something. We oh, had yeah. Sandra Bland. Mm. And, um, and you know, and all of those stories seemed like they were happening almost every other week, if not every week. The stories were so heart-wrenching. The stories were so, yeah. you know, we were doing our best to try to make sense of what we were pretty much fed telling us that it was the person's fault and not right. any... Um, fault of those who were in authority those who you know those who were in positions of power um and the person people started rising up you know people started getting oh, yeah. really frustrated and again I, I caught it was a crazy summer because it's like everything happened in the summer it did and it was an aggressive time mm -hmm. 
so now here we are, 2018. So this is 2016 when initially, um, you know, the Texas trooper who arrested Sandra Bland faced perjury charges, and y'all forget the forgive the date. Um, but mm. now we're going to um, where they're actually trying to figure out, you know, was there any impropriety in that arrest? Um, of course, you know, one of the things that they said, you know, the, the, the trial went to, I mean, the, it went to court and they said that they, you know, they dismissed the charges. Um, they Shock. said that, you know, they really did rule that um, she would died from suicide and they said that she had a history of mental illness. Um, her, her family did say she did struggle with depression, but she was not in a situation where she would have killed herself. Right. They would have noticed that form of extreme extremeness. Right. What do you feel about the conversation as it relates to um, African-Americans mental illness? And when you think about some of these situations that come up when we talk about um, law enforcement, but specifically, um, I guess, violence that occurs in our prison systems. I mean, we're not we're not. We're not you know, we're not in a position, an authority. I mean, you know, we don't have enough experience in prison systems. But seriously, like, what right. do we think is happening that this continues to happen? Um, I really want to say that if people would start to pay more attention and take more care um, as it relates to the prisoner. See, I, it's a whole nother conversation when you talk about prison systems t with me. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people look at it as, oh, slavery is done and over with. <laughs> Look at your prison systems and then you tell me that slavery is over with. And I think you talk about this a lot, too, yeah. about the privatization of yeah, prisons. Yeah. And I think exactly. that's something I didn't I didn't learn that until I actually I met Caitlin. Because I didn't I didn't think about it from the perspective that it is a business. I didn't know about pri prisons being privately owned. I mean, I, just, yeah. I you know, you think about this in your state, your municipality. Yeah. You're not thinking that some person or in, group of people actually own this yeah. is not government ran which gives it a whole nother feel it does yes. yeah well, well, well when you look at it when you look at what's going on in the prison system um and, and by it being privatized it it's one of those things to, to where it it, it, it is an open door for impropriety yeah, right because is. at the end of the day business why do businesses exist to make a profit it's true right that, that's what that's why they exist and so Anything that's going to keep them profitable um, is what the, are, are the practices oftentimes that they're going to employ. And so when you look at what happened with Sandra Bland, not saying that that goes into prison privatization, but it does go into the mindset of folks, of, of law enforcement officers mm -hmm. um, who, who have um, traditionally uh, not been, <coughs> excuse me, f for people of color. Right. It, it, it is what it is. And so when, when you look at what's been happening, and, and and about him them filing charges uh, potentially filing charges you know I, I think it's it's um, I'm glad yeah uh, it, because it's time it is it's time it's time for the nation to really start paying more attention to those particular type of types of things we are not to be hunted down and torn apart just because of the pigmentation that we carry mm -hmm. it's time for that conversation to be had but. It's been long overdue, and to be completely honest, some action needs to come behind that because for that sister to lose her life the way that she did, and of course nobody was there, and everybody you know that had the ability to say this is what happened, that is what happened. I, I really don't believe that she did that to herself. I mean, I, there's nothing that you can say to me. No, I did not know her personally, but I see and know a lot of individuals that deal with mental health issues. I mean, it's just very heartbreaking to me because being a veteran we deal with mental health issues quite often a lot of us have ptsd from the things that we saw and witnessed so you're going to utilize that you know in question you're going to utilize that to get us out of the the realm that we're supposed to be in put us in another realm and do something negative to us that's just i have no real um i have no real feeling that she did something to herself in that prison I just don't it's nothing that anybody can say to convince me otherwise I do not in any way condone violence and I don't condone the violence of anybody who is in the prison system as well so um, the conversation does need to happen but it does need to uh, it, it requires some action to take place as well you know hey, hey, you're absolutely right I'm, I, and I'm glad um, and, and you know it, 
I'm gonna tell you right now, it's an amazing thing to have an amazing professional <laughs> <laughs> in the room. I'm telling you, because you guys don't understand. Oh how, yeah, how, look, if, if only you knew. If right. only. But this is what I do. Absolutely. This is what literally I do. Literally, it's what you do. This is what I do. Literally. It, well, and so got to keep the conversation going. We, we definitely got to keep the conversation going, and uh, and and so I, I'm telling you, I, I certainly appreciate. Um, your perspective. Thank you. Your experience. Thank you. Um, I, I just I I appreciate it all. I appreciate it so much that that you know it just makes me smile. Oh, it it, it certainly makes me smile. Well, thank you. Yeah, man. And 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 um, I, I think smiling is a good thing. It, it is, is absolutely a good thing. And the, this portion of the show is sponsored by Elite Dental Wellness. At Elite Dental Wellness, our vision is to create a welcoming practice that will offer exceptional dental care in a lifetime of dental wellness. We are committed to the finest dental possible oral care and the overall health and well-being of our patients. Elite Dental Wellness is a, built upon a foundation of integrity, expertise, and service. Through our commitment to modern dentistry, continuing education, and a friendly atmosphere, we strive to make our patients feel that they are a part of our family. Dentistry can be scary, daunting, and uncomfortable. Dr. Baptiste and her team work tirelessly to ensure your comfort. Make your appointment today with Dr. Ashandra Baptiste at Elite Dental Wellness by calling 713-789-8680. Again, the number is 713-789-8680. Elite Dental Wellness. Yeah, so it's a smile at the end. It is a smile at the end. It's a, it's a list of little things. It's it a little is. Things. It is. Okay, now let's talk about something else. I mean, coming from the education background, mm. <laughs> you know, I you know I I feel like the in the classroom, and I can speak to this because I'm I'm currently in a role where I'm teaching. I'm not gonna say young minds, but minds, right, of right. all ages, because we are dealing with a generation of non traditional students. That's correct. Um, and we're teaching minds and. I feel like there's a miseducation and responsibility on behalf of the professors in the classroom Absolutely. to make sure they're giving the proper narratives and information. Mm -hmm. So recently a teacher um, in, a, in his classroom told his students not to date African-Americans because they are not worth it. Wait, I'm sorry. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what didn't happen? Okay, so... This person, bless bless this person's heart. I mean, they probably really thought that what they were saying, you could just look at them. Oh. Let's look at this my person. God. <laughs> um, in his mind, in his in his mind and in his heart, he thought he was giving them wisdom. He did. He really did. Um, and so he's he thought that by saying that he was guiding them um the right way. Now, mind you, this person is in Florida. Now I don't know what it is about the state of Florida. I Child. haven't quite figured out Florida yet. Um, cause Florida seems to have had, a have ha been mauled with a lot of negativity, a lot of bad narratives, Absolutely. Of, you know, a lot of interesting stories coming out yeah. of Florida. And yeah. so this particular teacher, um, and not working at the collegiate level, of course, he's, he's actually working at a public school. Um, oh, this was at the uh, high school level. Uh, let's see. Can you scroll down a little bit for, I talk to my producer here. This, I just want to verify seventh grade. Oh, and eighth graders, so, so that's an impressionable time too, because we're thinking it about junior is. high school. Junior high school is one of the hardest times for any student. I don't care who you are, and if you tell me otherwise, I don't believe you. I yeah. think junior high school is a very hard time to uh, to create identity, and so this particular professor, excuse me, instructor, teacher, told the students that they should not date African Americans because they are not worth it. Now, as a male, um, you know who has done so much you've seen a lot what do you think about people that spin those narratives because i i mean i maybe i'm just maybe i'm just a little ignorant because i don't really i don't carry that type of hate in my heart for any particular group oh no baby i'm about to go there i'm sorry <laughs> do it brother <laughs> i'm about to go there as one who has been educated one who has traveled the world um, I am proud to say that I have never spent or even glanced at a jail cell with my naked eyes, knock on wood, to make sure that it never happens. Um, I do not in any way condone someone stating that the African-American is not worth it. How dare you, especially because we have off of the many different facets in our uh, ancestors' lives leading up to today, we have made tremendous strides, not only just to exist, but to be considered worthy of being here based on, you know, coming out of the slave trade. 
Um, the African American has taken so many different routes to try to look, feel, and you know, be grouped in in that inclusion of we are worth it. And for him to do something like this, that basically is stating that everything that I've ever done, anything that you guys have ever done, let you know if y'all weren't married. <laughs> It, it would basically say that it has been for nothing. How dare you? I mean, you don't know each and every last one of us individually. So how dare you say that the African-American as a collective is not worth dating? And that's just like, that's what I said. I don't care the type of heart or, or height or bias for any particular group. Like no. That. I, I mean, I just don't. And I and I think it's kind of, it. well, not kind of, it's very irresponsible to, to you know, spew that conversation. Um, especially to impressionable students. Absolutely. These are not adults, right? It'd be different if you were in a college setting. It'd be different if you were, um, you know, somewhere where students are in a position to make these decisions for themselves. But when you're talking about seventh and eighth year, seventh graders and eighth graders, persons that are really relying or looking or searching for information about life, this is not the information that they should be getting. Absolutely. This is the growing pains years. You know, when you go through puberty, when you start to develop, and not just physically, but mentally as well, anything that somebody hears, they're going to try to see where it comes from. This is when, because they don't know. These are those years that the innocence of the child is, you know, it begins to be stripped away. Mm -hmm. It takes me back to my seventh and eighth grade years when I had my first crushes on people I saw on television and, yeah, yeah. oh, this is cool and I can't wait to try this and do that. To have someone spew that particular type of disdain against a race of people. Sweetie, are you hurt? I mean, I just yeah, want to yeah. know. I, I try to find humor in things to keep from getting so angry because that is just ridiculous. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, re it's really sad. And it's unfortunate because, again, p people typically don't send their kids to schools to hear no. that type of information. So when you think, when I think about what that really means and how we're projecting, like, the negativity, it's just, it's just not cool. Now no. let's talk about let's talk about something else that's happening that I thought is really, really important. <laughs> 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 we got a lot going on in here today, but it's beautiful. Oh it's my all god. Beautiful. Well we are we are doing making it we are talking about let's talk about securing the bag and the legacy. Yeah. Let's secure the bag and the legacy. <laughs> okay, so the Obamas are about to secure this bag. Come on, bag. Okay, so the T um in the Obamas are in negotiations with Netflix to produce original series more than one mm. at Netflix. Um, the amount is undisclosed at the time, um, but we're thinking it's going to be pretty. It's going to be a pretty big situation because, of course, yeah. again, this is the, this is the first anything, right? Yes, this is it the is. first African American. Uh, president they've always been you know the obamas have always been right there in the middle of media yeah. social media uh -huh. but they'd never ab really abuse social media but no. they, they, they actually use the technology for um purpose i know before um he left office uh Kalen was able to one of the things he was able to do was go to a south by south lawn in dc which was really? mm -hmm, which was the, the, the version of south by south which was in austin <laughs> which a uh, president obama spoke with spoke at the spring before he yes. did south by south lawn yes and so for them to be able to produce this content these mm -hmm. series and this content on netflix i feel like it's a game changer honestly what do you think about it that it is i think that i've always thought that um the president emeritus and his lovely wife, our former first lady, they've been of such a high caliber. Mm -hmm. And anything that I have witnessed them do, and I, I say this proudly because everything that I've watched, when I was in office at school, he was in office as president. And I try to, like I said before, you want to label it as this is the type of leadership that you want to see. Mm -hmm. And anything that I've ever seen them do has been inspiring to me mm -hmm. and many people that I know. So this isn't just on a small scale. This is, you know, individuals that go on different levels outside of, you know, where we are uh, in the education field, in government, pra governmental practice and entertainment. I, I, you know, have the, the extreme honor to be connected with so many different people. And I always, you know, just like you said, I, I want to know how everybody feels about that. Yeah. And collectively, I have gotten nothing but great reviews about President Obama and former First Lady uh, Michelle Obama. 
and the things that I've seen them do. I'm excited about this. I can't wait to see what the content is. Yeah, I'm excited too. It's it must be really good what they're developing or what they've been, you know, what what their package looks like because mm-hmm. Amazon is now trying to, you see? know, counter offer. That's what I'm talking you know, about. Th- you know, these streaming services have a lot to provide and this is one thing that I think that, you know, regular television networks have to be very um they need to be up on their A game because Absolutely. people are going to go away from um, television on cable networks, especially when we have all this, you know, all of these, um, I guess, barriers that are about to come down about how you watch your internet, c- right, your cable, right, you know, it's, right. it's a lot of things that are happening. But I just, when I read this article, I thought this was amazing because I'm like, let me find out that we have such a president okay. or a former president that, you know, is still on, you know, pulse of what's happening in society and is showing, really showing what a true renaissance person looks like. Absolutely. Because not just politics, but mm-hmm. I'm still in the community, but I'm still going to, you know, I'm still going to be visible. I'm still going to connect right. at every, and he's only 55. It's his way of saying I'm still here. I'm still here. And I love that about him. And he, and he, and he makes, makes it a point to make sure he stays engaged. And that's something that I think we all need to learn mm-hmm. as we change, because you know, you're not supposed to stay the same. Right. No. And so as we change and as we get diverse, we also need to always look for new platforms. Yes. To deliver our content. And with that being said, this portion of the show is sponsored by The Sphere. Are you starting your business and looking for a place to advertise? Do you have a need to reach out to thousands of people across the world to build your brand or sell your product? If so, get your product placement and advertising needs handled right here at The Sphere. We offer a wide variety of content delivery platforms, including iTunes, Google Play, Netflix, excuse me, Google Play, SoundCloud, scratch that, (laughs) YouTube, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, and so many others. Plus, we have a vast have a vast demographic reach within the United States as well as modern countries across the globe. Our enriched content and inspiring dialogue, coupled with your strategic ad, is surely to hit the mark every time. Call us today at area code eight three two. 772-7789 772-7789 or send an email over to advertise at the sphere.tv again the number is 832-772-7789 or advertise at the sphere.tv yeah yeah <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I love it. Now, you this is a quick, <laughs> we have a lot going on, right? Ciao. <laughs> a quick, a quick moment. Is, did you, y'all, did you know? This is a did you know moment. Okay. okay. Did you know? Man. Did you know for the first time ever, there's going to be a black lady Liberty on a coin? Wait, I'm sorry. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> in real life, y'all in real life. Really? Yeah, this, of course, it's not going to happen this year, but oh. they're going to introduce this black lady Liberty. So we're going to have a black statue of Liberty on a coin. So that goes back to um, the uh, and people keep saying that it's an urban legend, but I keep hearing. Matter of fact, yeah, that it's a, um, a actual statue. It's not here. I believe it's overseas somewhere. I, I'm definitely going to have to get my research down. But um, it is a black lady in a white gown that looks something like the Statue of Liberty. And I'm I'm thrilled about this. Now, mind you, this news came out. Now, this is what makes this interesting. This news was actually circulated in CNN last year. Stop it. But it was not talked about until this year. <sighs> oh, wow. So th- this was makes it, because technically that coin was already minted. It's for $100. Good. Really? Value. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Come on, go. That's my ratchet, my ratchet moment. <laughs> Value. <laughs> <laughs> no, let me, let me stop being funny. No, but seriously though, but no one actually knew about this coin. So that which makes the story even more interesting to me, to right. me because we don't really carry hundred dollar coins. No. We carry hundred dollar bills. bills. Yes, and it has Benjamin Franklin on the front of it. Right. So what? So what do you think the significance of this coin is? Because for you to make Lady Liberty African American with braids, obviously or twist. Oh yes. Oh, um, yes. You know, it would show you that, you know, she is something. Oh, yes. <laughs> she she definitely is uh, the driving force of the face of that coin. Mm-hmm. And I absolutely love it because what other piece of, uh, of currency do we have that represents us? Absolutely. Or any of our Hispanic or Latin American Americans. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, it needs to go beyond what we've seen so far. If this truly is a diverse nation, if this truly is a nation that has several different, it's the melting pot. Why do we then not have currency to reflect that? That's not bad. No, it's, it's not bad. It's actually good. Like I said, and it was just amazing to me because I did not know this coin was in circulation. I had no or idea minted, either. But it's at a hundred dollar co- hundred dollar coin, gold coin First with African American. Lady Liberty on it. That's beautiful. 
I need it. Right. I need it too. We're gonna have to figure I need a out a couple of them. I need, just to keep it, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. just go get it. Yeah, I'm not, yeah that's like getting spent. Oh, right. Not, Y'all not, know how they kept the um, the half dollar with JFK on right. the front, and then people kept the two dollar bill. Right. With, I would definitely keep one of those. Yeah, for sure. I mean, because it's or we don't, we, we don't know how many, how long the they're going to keep minting Absolutely. them. So you want to exactly. have it just to say that this was a time in history for whatever reason mm-hmm. it happened and it flew under the radar because I didn't know about it until last week. You think uh, Donald Trump had anything? to I do with that? I don't know about that, bro. I don't know. <laughs> I just it, it may not, but you know what? It may not even be Trump, but it but it's systemic to keep to keep you know the greatness of, of African Americans down. Right. I mean, when do we stop? When do we say enough? Yeah, of well, minorities. Let me of the let, minority. Yeah, let, let, let me just expand it. Not just African Americans, but minorities. Minorities, because it's it's not just it's not just a black thing. It's an everybody right. thing. It's an everybody. We, we, we just right. happen to be. It seems to me the most. Uh, we bark the loudest. Yeah. Right. Uh, because we do look the most different. <coughs> Agreed. We do look yeah. the most different, and, and with that, there's a lot that comes with that, and we it can is. talk about that on another show. I'm about to say no. Because that we, we can about, talk about I that. Because that's open a. Because that <laughs> I'm like, that's a like we got to sit down with right. Jesus and talk. Like, I, okay, I'm, so I'm tell us the you. real. Why do we look so different? Put the right. Bible on the table and ask. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's so funny. Right. But okay, so now another thing that's an interesting fact. Our black Hollywood in the making. Atlanta, Georgia is now the number one filming location in the world. Yeah. It's not just, you know, a you know, not just a place you pass by. Because at first I think we were talking about, okay, it's black Hollywood. Right. And people were really running from mm-hmm. the black Hollywood and the stigma that it that Atlanta encompasses, right? Oh, yeah. Um, but now people are like, Oh my God, it is the place uh-huh. to be. And Changing. now and we and we're talking about we we're, you know, vying for Houston to become one of those places as well mm. because you know Houston as a city is mm-hmm. trying to get some of that same action here that Atlanta's seen some of that growth. So yeah. shout out to local government out there because because oh, what yes. has happened is um, they rallied to, they rallied together uh, in providing studios and networks um, so much um, uh, so many tax incentives and tax breaks in oh, yeah. f- by filming in in Atlanta and, I love that. and and so you know that's one of the things uh, one of the reasons why uh, no, number two. Um, listen, when you look at what Turner Studios has done, in, so Turner Studios is headquartered da- there mm-hmm. in Atlanta, and, and they have been champions, and they've been broadcasting for you know decades upon decades. Absolutely. And, and so you know it, it's been so much, um, it's been so much that that has happened. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? A- yeah. Out there. Yeah. Absolutely. It, it, so uh, it, you know, it's it's uh, uh, Turner. Mm-hmm. Yeah, turn em, turn yeah, turn broadcast. Broadcast. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, turn yeah. broadcasting stuff. Yeah, so they've done a lot, and they've done a lot, and then we have CNN. You know, um, we have. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a lot of things that are you know lo- located from Atlanta. So we have to think about all the you know all the things that are happening from Atlanta. Then you, of course, it's it's just growing. It's continually yes. growing, and yes. again. From there, I think Atlanta created a nice footprint or blueprint for it to move to other cities, other places. Absolutely. And you have to, you know, there's no way that you can mention what's going on in Atlanta without uh, talking about Tyler Perry Studios Mm -hmm. and the work that they've done. Um, I've always been a very strong fan of uh, his work. And um, one of the things that I do, uh, I I have that Madea voice down packed. (laughs) Do you really? Absolutely. I'm scared. What you mean? Madea makes me feel some type of way. Why does Madea make you feel some type of way? I just can't. You know, it's just something about, I don't know. I just, oh, I can't really. It's not that I don't like Madea. It's just. Madea's hilarious. But in a different type of way. Like, I don't know. It just makes me feel. <laughs> I can't explain it. This is not hate. It's really not hate. Everybody oh, no, has no. their preference. And oh, I no, just no. happen to just be like, oh, Medea, yay. Because <laughs> I'm supportive. But sometimes I'm like, oh, so much. Oh, no. I, I absolutely love that character. It reminds me of my grandmother, mm-hmm. my aunts, my sister, <laughs> and my mother all wrapped into one. Because... That is, I, I really don't like people saying it's just a satire, that, you know, it's a character. It actually, we have family members, some of us, mm-hmm. uh, and on both sides of the spectrum, 
Um, we have family members that have those characteristics. Mm -hmm. Let us not forget that art imitates life. No, absolutely. I, I, I don't. I definitely don't believe. I mean, I definitely don't believe that art does not imitate life. My gr my grandmother on my mother's side was very much vocal. I'm not from the South originally. Uh, my family's from up north, or, or from New York originally, and right. so, you know, I had an interesting. Gr dynamic growing up because i had a grandmother that was very vocal mm -hmm. she you know she would tell you what it was absolutely. with curse words included adjectives. absolutely that's um, then my I had mom's another mom. right and on my, <laughs> my dad's side you know i had a grandmother who i didn't really ever hear her curse but i knew right. but and it wasn't that she was just overly sweet either she was a really warm woman but it mm -hmm. was she was a very mellow person. And that's she's my dad's so mom. Mellow. She's so she's mellow. She's quiet and, and to a certain point. To, to a certain, you know, and so it's just interesting because it's it's not a, I think what, I think the, when we have the Medea character, I think the Medea character is a strong representation of someone mm -hmm. in a family. Mm -hmm. uh, what I always tell people, is, you know, when I, because I get to, ch you know, engage with a lot of, um, a lot of diversity, I'm like, but she's not the only one. And no. let's be clear about that because because yeah. it was interesting. I, I even saw an episode of Family Feud and they were talking about women. And one of the um, contestants was like, Big Mama. I'm like, Big Mama? Who is Big Mama? She's like, you know, right. Big Mama's house. I'm like, that's not a real person. Like, let's be clear. These are characters that people are playing that may mm -hmm. have represented somebody in their life. That's but that's not right. everybody's grandmother right. or mother or aunt. Right. And we cannot think that all persons from this group mm -hmm. have someone that looks true, like this true because mm -hmm. down south you know being a product of houston and partially california i i got to see two Killer different times yes girl <laughs> <laughs> okay, no. i got to see um the i had the fortunate uh chance to mm -hmm. see how the california uh, matriarch is in regards to my family. Mm -hmm. I don't want to talk, you know, speak for everybody. I'm not speaking for everybody. I'm speaking on my family. But I did get to see how um, the down south matriarch and the Californian west coast matriarch, there are similarities and differences in everything. Mm -hmm. But the one constant is that they are about their family. Absolutely. And that's what is so beautiful to me in all of the representations mm -hmm. that I see, whether it be somebody who is the preacher's wife or the gun-toting grandmother that drinks and cusses, like Brown say in the car. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, 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 and they're all, it's, listen, this world needs all of them. A absolutely. My it's, mother always says it takes all types of people to, to make, make this world, world go around. I say it that does. all the time, too. Like, it takes all types. With all types, we need all of them. We need every last one of them. Because we all cannot be the same. Uh-uh. That, that, that's this. where the boring comes in. Yeah, we all can't be the same. We should all should not strive to be the same either okay At now all. let me ask you this i know that you have your hand in a lot of different things I outside do. of just I what do. you've done yeah. um and just a little comparison i know well wakanda forever first of yes. all we gotta we gotta greet people like that yes. it is what it is wakanda forever wakanda forever <laughs> killmonger michael b jordan yes. for everybody who don't know who killmonger <laughs> is um, has a production company um, called Outlier Society, and he's going to implement what they call now an inclusion rider. Mm -hmm. And this inclusion rider re requires that whoever purchases the movie, they have to have a diversified cast, diversified production and crew. He's like this inclusion rider is, is something that was actually originally created for um, other for work environments like for regular businesses yeah. but he, but Hollywood has now adopted it as something that should be the standard for movies especially in the wake of um, some of the things we've saw in the part on the past about not having a lot of diversity in film mm -hmm. um, in mm -hmm. television mm -hmm. and we see some groundbreaking things happening with Shondaland companies and things oh, like that where they they are striving to make all shows more diverse from your perspective, I know you're getting into a little bit of film. A, a lot, lot of bit of film. A lot of bit. A lot of bit of film. A lot of bit of film. A little bit. A lot of bit. <laughs> yes. Tell us about what you have going on, and tell us about the importance of diversity at from your perspective in this filmmaking. Now, um, I will be performing for my last project, um, graduating with my master's in May. Okay. I will be doing the history of KTSU in the form okay. of a documentary. KTSU, yes. we love you too. Yes, indeed. Forty-seven years in the gang. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I I love telling these stories because 
we need to know. We need to know the foundations upon which we come up from. Mm -hmm. And when I say we, I mean those of us that are in that community, those of us that grew up around Third Ward and, you know, Browick, Hiram Clark. That's here in Houston. Yeah. And, you know, we all knew Texas Southern was the college here for the African-American. Mm -hmm. But we also knew that U of H was here, Rice was here, HCC was here. But I love telling the stories that I lived through through absolutely so i can put my hands on it and not have it be a robotic monotone history lesson mm -hmm. i'm giving you a story of how this impacted my life and the lives of several million others absolutely i'm in that and i did my first student film um oh god it it really changed the game because a lot of african americans do not look at our ancestral roots beyond slavery mm -hmm. But um, I encourage everybody to do that because you need to know, or if you don't want to know, fine. But just for knowledge's sake, learn about what your ancestors did back in the motherland. There are ways to find those things out. Well, and I think that's a conversation that we've had before Kayla and I have mm -hmm. had guests on. And we said, you know, it's unfortunate because as a black person here in the United States, yeah. we are we lack identity Absolutely. because we identify only with United States and mm -hmm. slavery. Mm -hmm. Slavery, mm -hmm. slavery is not where we're from. It's not um, by slavery, any means. Right. We were, we were, you know. And unfortunately, when we think about what Africa is and what Africa means, Africa is a continent. It with is. several it's countries. Not a country. Exactly. And which means that all black people are not from the same place. There That's were right. different dialects, yes. different religions, practices, you know, beliefs, tribes, you know, things like that. Yeah. And you think about what um, trading from across the Atlantic, you know, mm, across mm. Europe, trading to Spain, trading, you know, when we talk about um, Afro Latinas and things yes. like that, we think about our yes. brothers and sisters in Cuba, Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, and so Absolutely. they look, we look, familiar like them because we were they were from Africa exactly and, but they just happened to land in a different place and actually they landed in the Spanish speaking countries first yes they did and from there we came to America Absolutely. so it, it, you know everyone didn't come directly from Africa yeah. to the United States so we have to know that history we need to know and I agree with you I mean that's one of the things my mom and I talk about I'm like I really want you her to specifically get some um, ancestry things go done right. because there's some um, persons that have been looking for people in our family. Exactly. And um, I was like, you know, we, I'm different. I mean, even we talk about hair texture. Every every black exactly. person doesn't have the same texture of hair. Everyone's hair does not kink or curl. Exactly. You know, I happen to have hair that doesn't kink or curl. It's straight, but it's not straight silky. Right. It's just straight. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, yeah. Mine is the same way. When it's cut down very low, it's straight. It's straight. It doesn't, you know, and it's not. And so you can't really identify people by texture of hair. You know, it's this things mm -hmm. that we have been mis misled and mistold absolutely because they're we're trying to be bunched up in one little pot oh, and yeah. we can't do that oh, because yeah. again it's a huge continent with several several countries several and let us not forget those of us who have uh people who were uh native americans uh -huh. here already mm -hmm. in that bloodline as well so i really i encourage people to look for your roots. Oh, absolutely. I feel like we're doing a Please. commercial for roots.com, but not the is movie. Is that a <laughs> that's I just, I, 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 I want you to no, about that one. I just made that up. I'm not Kim Hart. I just made that up. I just did that right. myself. I didn't. I didn't. Right. Okay. But um, uh, the, the film, the short film was called Ashe. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, I, I looked at it because we had Hurricane Harvey here, uh -huh. and uh, the character, one of the main characters is a goddess uh, um, of the uh, Yoruba uh, Orisha, and she is so angry by what she's seeing because the people are suffering. And she chooses two sisters who couldn't be any more different if they tried to be. Mm -hmm. But because they were so close in age, they separated, went to different places. One went to college in this place, one went to college in another place. And the story basically unravels to show that they were chosen by her to find their way back to each other. And in them finding themselves and finding each other again, they suffer from uh, uh, white supremacist activity. Mm -hmm. And it's so compelling to bring them together because one of the sisters is the one that's attacked and the other one is clear across the country and she feels it. 
Mm. And, and and there is bonds like that in families mm. and i think that mm. we don't think about that we think about and we think about what storytelling really does we have an opportunity to actually give absolutely um back to communities give back knowledge and information and one of the things i love when i see you know now i mean especially now the narratives um, yes. the, from the you know the, the screenwriters the, yes. the playwrights the you know directors the producers the actors you know using their talents like you know i want to give back something even absolutely. if it seems entertaining absolutely. there's a there's some value to it that I, that was reached from someone else's truth absolutely um one of the things i love seeing of course now in hollywood is seeing the amount of giving that's happening yes. and you're giving through your 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 project but just giving in terms of not just time but even their financial things mm -hmm. and um a few articles that i read this week talked about you know build billionaires of course can ex be in extreme poverty we all know that we yes. know that if if a billionaire donated money to whatever they want to donate specifically to a poverty related stuff we could end poverty in the united states but the poor yeah. will always be with us right exactly but on another end we see persons that may not be billionaire status yet like will and jada pinkett smith love them and they are donating water monthly wow. to flint until wow. the lead levels in schools are down and i think that's something you can do with your you know when you get certain platforms like you're like i said you're using your platform wisely and I you're am. using it in Thank genius you. and i think that that's something we can all learn from and but as you graduate from platform to platform i think more is required of you it is and just to see them using this platform will and Jaden, um you know father and son doing this thing and they're donating water mm. um to flint you know just to make sure because lead levels are down we haven't forgotten about flint no we have we've been marred with a lot of divisive conversation Absolutely. but flint is happening right here in the u.s Still. this is not across waters not across anybody else's pond right. this is our responsibility because we allowed it to happen in a very impoverished situation in an impoverished community it is and it's it very is. sad um and so with all that being said i mean i don't know about you but we've covered a lot i mean it's a lot more i want to cover but we don't oh, yeah. running out of time i know <laughs> i mean because listen it's a lot of um, one thing well let me let me leave y'all with this so we're going to talk about this next week so this is my teaser for next week uh -oh. did y'all know that the language in hud's mission statement is changing um, our HUD director, Ben Carson, is removing the anti-discrimination language from HUD's mission statement. It will no longer reference inclusive communities free from, dis free from discrimination. We'll talk about that next week. <laughs> We will talk about that next week because it's important that we know these things. This is stuff that we don't get to, you know. Right, right. This is things that we just don't know. Yeah, we don't know these things. And, yeah. you know, to be sometimes I would just love to be a fly on the wall in the halls of Congress or Man. in the Oval you know, <laughs> in the oval. Come on, Olivia. I would love to, and you know what? I'm going to be honest with you. That's something that a lot of us have our eyes on. When I turned 35 two years ago, and I became legally able to run for president of the United States, I was like, hmm, this is something that I might actually want to do one day. So let in me go ahead life. in real life. And the reason being, and that's you know that goes back to my story. When I got to to my to TSU, I didn't know what SGA was, but because um, I wanted to be Mr. TSU, that's something that I had known about. But when I learned about it, and I'm like, so this is the president. Let me see what this presidential thing is all about. And it was the most wonderful and brutal time of my life because I knew what it felt like. I understood what President Obama had to go. And every yeah. president before him, you have millions of people. Thank God I only had 9,566. <laughs> he, had, he had millions of people that he had. Their concerns were his concerns. Yeah. These are things that we look to you to fix. So, yeah, I do have my eyes on the Oval one day, just like um, Melly said on Scandal, I want the Oval. <laughs> she want the Oval, and she came for it, didn't she? Yes, she did. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. Well, I'm so excited to have you on the show oh, today. Thank you so I'm, much. Um, we, are, we, are, we are just so happy to have you. We're excited about what you're doing, everything you're doing for thank the university, you. but also with what it, it branches out into other places. Absolutely. I'm, I just wish you all the best. Thank you, and Successes. I do the same for you, Dr. Um, Laws, future <laughs> Dr. Laws. Future Dr. Laws. <laughs> <laughs> it's happening, y'all. You know, listen, we don't know how, but it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's, it's going to happen. happen. You know, our routes are just so unique. But yeah. um, it's so. It's, but it's a very exciting time. It is. Um, so thank you guys for tuning in again to Society Now. Remember, we do not bring you fake news or alternative facts. We're bringing the real, real. And we um, definitely will bring it to you every week. So see you next Monday.